Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lost Streets of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Hutiglava. But right now, we got to talk about a couple things, but the war is over, a missed opportunity. The reports coming in are sparse, though we now have reason to believe that the Americans have entirely evacuated from South Africa, where the last troop transports having lifted off sometime last night. As our own siege in the capital has been deemed unsatisfactory by many of the generals present for the battle, it has become apparent that our attempts to break the defenses of the South Africans have been insufficient, even still. With Americans out, the South African government now exists without support to prop it up, and things seem to finally be going our way. As according to the Central African officer involved in the siege, a message has come through the South African government admitting to a total surrender of the city and the government. With Americans out of the picture and the South African army already dissolving in mass, it's widely accepted that the war has been won and Africa secure, of course. The shock waves of this conflict will continue for ages to come, for good or bad. For instance, plenty of valuable equipment left over from the evacuation has already made its way into our hands, with technical teams investigating exactly how to use these newfound American treasures, unfortunately. Across the entirety of the former South, or former South African state, local resistance is on the rise, with too few of the spoils being redirected towards the Boer state's counterinsurgency program. At least for the moment, for now. We have the support of the Reich, a loyal state to ourselves, and most importantly time, with these firmly under grasp of the Reich's place in Africa has been secured, and remains secured forevermore, and of what a war was. The war's won. The march southwards was one embraced with blood. Battle after battle, the screams and begging of wounded men to be killed grew tiresome for the Reich Commissar Hans Hutig, and finally being squashed out of their miserable existence as the tank treads inched forwards. The double S regiments of the Reich Commissar of Africa have proved successful warriors upon the African front, and this final siege proved no different from every other butchery. The final battle erupted as Ost African commitment to the war had begun, under the strict orders of Daddy Hans. The odor of smoke and burnt flesh coupled with a screaming continued for hours until from the safety of forward operating base, the Reich Commissar could bear no more of his weight. He ordered the immediate advance of his regiments across the African plain until it assault the Cape, last bastion of defense thus. They marched ever onwards, burning the land under the strict orders to not leave a denizen alive, and thus under the burning stars of the African night. Who took away the news of the battle? Echoes of gunfire erupted, but by the eventual rising flames of the city as he heard tank shells crumpling, under, crumpling the scum-ridden buildings that had made up the city. Finally, hours later, a lone soldier burst into Hutig's room, causing a thunderous slam as the door hit the wall. The soldier shouted, Sir, Rax Komasa Hutig! Sir, a news from the fra Rottenfuhr! Uh, Hutig interrupted. You are allowed a draft in. The African is cold, and you know this. He said, immediately shooting up from his seat and walking to the soldier with a bottle in his hand. Sir, my dearest apologies, sir. I was sent to inform you of the victory over South Africa. The combatants have been flushed out of our regiment, alongside those of the Reichskommissar Schenk and Müller, claim victory tonight, sir. The soldier finished. Victory? Did you say that of Reichskommissar Schenk and Müller? Yes, yes, sir. The soldier's statement was cut off as Hutig smashed his bottle over his head, ordering him out of the room. The end of the war was Hutig's victory, and Hutig's victory alone in his mind. With Africa here, we've done our duty to the Reich. Now, this is now back in July. No, what I did, I went back in time and basically restarted the entire last episode and didn't have to, you know, focus on the reading for the video, but went back, didn't focus on the reading and just kind of concentrate our forces a little bit better. Um, yeah, and it actually worked out that way a little better. As you can see, this is where all the divisions at. We didn't quite get to the Kopstadt, but, or West Cop, but we were, as you can tell, very, very close. And now we have garrison duties. Um, our, our divisions are really flipping weak right now. Holy crap. Uh, but... It's over. My god, it sucked so much. I hate that war so much. It just... In the early stages, if America, the offense doesn't get involved, it's not that bad. It's really, really easy, actually. And we could just blitzkrieg through it, but I didn't want to blitzkrieg through it. Because I wanted to see how long it would take. So, yeah. Also, the couple comments included, tax switch to the United States to see what type of, uh... You know, discontent they have with the war. Well, apparently they had heavy, heavy rioting. Like... As we saw yesterday, was it like 20, minus 20% 20 stability? So apparently, as we all know in America, rioting does basically nothing. So the effects of the South African war feel like they do nothing. They really do nothing. They need a much bigger impact, I think, on America in general. I think you should, they should have some sort of like consciousness level or something like that. It just, it's not enough. It's just not enough to have any sort of meaningful impact for America or even Australia. Like, why would, would, would there not be propaganda in Australia saying, why die for South Africa? Like, they have the Japanese to worry about, literally, north of their border. So, I, I don't understand. The same thing in Canada. Why die for South Africa? I mean, Tommy Douglas, I have no idea who that is. Status of Western alienation. Status of the Quebec. Elizabeth in exile, the Nixon shock. So, like, the whole South African war, I just don't think has enough of an effect to really get anything, to push anything anywhere. Still, you know, maybe that's just my opinion. You know, I could be wrong about that, but it just, it didn't do anything. It literally did nothing. Uh, for against the AI, so that's I think a little lacking in my opinion, but we're still doing the African disaster. If you like to read that again, please go right ahead. But now, since the god awful war is over, we have Stabilisierung des Reichstags. 
Um, the continent is filled with warlords, revolutionary separatist movements, and degeneracy. It's the duty of every colonial of Alta to ensure the integrity of the gross Afghanistan Reichstag for decades to come, and to allow the Stahatler to execute his plans. The stability of our nation is ever eroding, and require never-ending efforts, at least as long as anyone in Africa dares to defy the might of our people. We're currently stage one of our plan to put Africa under our total control. It's still wild, rampant, and with rebels holding vast amounts of power and control of various swaths of our righteous lands. Our Vasilin uh, Stadt, the Boer Republic, is also undergoing immense political shifts and dissidents. Still plagued by the influence of the ANC rebels, they are unable to effectively rule over the lands we've given them. These rebels wreak havoc in their own territory, and if the Boers are unable to control the situation, we ought to do it ourselves. The situation is uneasy in the Republic, and the influence of the ANC is dangerous. System of efficiency. The big African sta state here has built upon the remains of incompetency, and as such, has lackluster infrastructure across the continent for the Stadthetler. The usual circuits of construction will not be enough to rebuild his empire as quickly as he had planned. The few reports that managed to slip through the Odenstadt's dot curtains indicates that they have been applied a new method of worker relocation, dispatch where needed when needed. While the Reichstag lacks real skilled workers, there's infinite supplies of natives at least plenty to send into construction sites across this continent. Of course, doing such things will destabilize impacted areas, but that will hopefully be easily taken care of by our garrisons. These new workers will join the Entwicklung des Afrikanischen Territoriums program, or Development of the uh, African Territories program, or EAT program. It will be trained to operate in widely different areas where we can build roads or factories. The decisions to conscript all are available on the map. You will be able to build infrastructure and production units by clicking on this corresponding button when they're selecting a state inside the Reichstag. Number uh, people there. So really, the only place that's really concerning is uh, Uganda, which is slightly less than fifty percent. But where is Ubangi Shadi? The Bongo? No. Uh, no, maybe we can't find it like this. Ubangi. Because right now I'm pretty sure it's right up here. Ubangi Shadi. Is it up here somewhere? Uh, let's go back to the map. Uh, Zambia is pretty good though. Oh, the Congo's are really good, too. So, we want to do Congo. Actually. Congo's all this area. W former Belgium territory. Oh, look at this. Establish camps. Ooh. Cost 600 workers. The buildings are instantaneous. Oh, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Oh, I can't wait to do this. Look, situation will worsen. Nice. Nice, nice. So, after that... 95... 95%. In Mozambique? Oh, boy. Ah, we need workers all over the place, right? What is up here? 85%. Uh, we don't control that area. 72%, 91%, 95 What if we just did everybody at least once? Take everyone you can. Alright, so I did make things a little bit worse all over the area. Even in Uganda, which probably wasn't very good to do. But, how many people do we have here? Oh, from Namibia. Uh, if you want to read about this again, please go ahead. I read this one yesterday, so there you go. And economy-wise, uh, we're still growing a little bit. And in South African War, thank God. Um, and actually, we can spend less to make more money to pay off the debt. Point 0.9 is really not that bad at all. So, maybe not. I think we're okay. Keep the spending high for now. We need more growth anyways, so it's fine. The Battle of Gitika? The Rundish rebels have assaulted Gitika recently with the probable support of the Ugandish rebels for three days. Half the city was under their control, however, the SS was able to push them back, albeit a huge cost to the forces. I do not know the full extent of the casualties so far, but reports say that at least a thousand troops are injured. The sword in Gitika only shows the native's determination to overthrow hegemony. Despite their weakness, even so, I do not believe that they can successfully push our armies back, so long as we have superior technology and men, our hold over Urundis assured. We do not need reinforcements for now. This is too good to be true. Probably is. 17, of course. Uh, Supply-wise, we are lacking something pretty heavily all over the place, which sucks. And what's the base of local militia to control of Sunset Barhafen? Our uh, good to inform the straw headed that the following raid by SS Polizei forces into a warehouse reported to house several leaders of the anti airing movement in Sunset Bar. A fire fight broke out in which 12 men of the garrison were killed in the service of the Reichstag. Unfortunately, this appears to have triggered an organized uprising by the leaders of the natives, which managed to take control of Sunset Bar Hafen, the port district. We previously have not experienced such an unrest amongst the natives in Sunset Bar, the reason for which I suspect that this uprising was triggered due to Italian interference. Therefore, I suspect that the rebellion has no real basis of support. And that quick and decisive military action to destroy the rebels will suffice to restore control of Sansapar. Hi, Hutik Aktum. Shahadra Hutik, I must urgently and anonymously convey to you that the seriousness of the situation in Sansapar is much greater than you are being told, and the rebellion commands a large degree of popular support. Any mention of foreign influence is likely exaggerated, and remaining on the islands will likely be a waste of resources. Uh, well, we can't do this one, so inform Hustler of the traitor in his midst, and ready the troops for an attack on Sansapar Hafen. Kenya Dissidents Army. I think there was one before. 
Mikhail's agitations in North Africa have escalated, from far being from cowed by the arrival of SS reinforcements into the region. The Luo leader has begun organizing Luo brigades across the Reichstag territory, claimed as his people's ethnic homeland. Despite the ominous name, all of our intelligence suggests that these so called brigades are something closer in number to an SS group, consisting of only a handful of brigades or a dozen or so of each men. Such a small force is barely worth a blip on the radar, and would stand absolutely no chance of offering even piecemeal resistance to SS authority owing to this. A plan has been concocted to use the Luo Brigades as a tool of entrapment, allowing the most extreme local separatist elements to coalesce into a single identifiable group, to be purged once the opportunity is right. It was to help curtail the low-level activity resistance endemic to Ost Africa, and make our future administration more secure over the long term. Cutting rats into a trap? Yes. But I did ask you guys yesterday, do we do... Keeping up with the Joneses, and or, or I guess just or, new state policies, and overall, at the time of this recording, there is a little bit more support for keeping up with the Joneses and a more Burgundian system. Ukraine? No. Also, no. Poland? Just early not. The Netherlands and Norway? Those are the pick of degeneracy within the Reich, and now that I've dealt with the traitors down here, and I would gladly shoot those Fs too if Germany wasn't filled with degenerates of its own. Nothing works. Why did none of them work? Unless, yeah, yes, that's why I didn't think of that before. Burgundy, yes. Maybe I was right all along. There aren't any disgusting, self-interested administrators, no effing natives running around murdering governors, no malingering mercenaries. That is what I need. He was right all along, but why didn't I listen to him then? No matter, I will make up for it. More than that, I will beat him. He will respect me. I will forge a subhuman infested crapple into something he couldn't dream of doing. If Himmler wants to turn some insignificant French city into a factory, I will turn this entire continent into assembly plant. He says he's gotten rid of degeneracy. He will know what that means when he sees it. He will. If it's the last thing I do, every last area in this continent will work until the degenerate filth of Jewish influence is completely exercised from their veins. Ha. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, we can get more workers. Oh, I love it. All right, so... Let's go back over here. So we have a couple workers here. Uh, devastation is looking not bad. 72%. Uh, let's see. Uganda. All the way up here. Oh, we can do this. Work the flesh. Oh, look at that. We get two more electricity or energy in Tete. And 1,500 more units of guns. Oh, I like working the flesh. Werewolves are gather our strength. Oh, it decreases our GDP. Create another division. Food, poison food supplies. More than negative 99% stability. Oh, it was a, about a year cooldown. Encourage uprisings. Less stability, but... You get a lot more political power and stability. Well, not, not much more stability, but still. Direct assaults. Ooh. We need more infantry equipment, then. Hmm. Ooh, we do this. How much infantry equipment do we have? We have negative 400. You know what? We can do this one. Uh, work the flesh. You know, we could try it. And then do some direct assaults. So get 1% stability to every state. That's not bad. We lose a little bit of stability, but, you know, stability is by the number here. Just like age. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so we have a couple guys here. And Uganda is a little bit of an issue. So we have this little lake up here. Oh, it's right here. Bowman shot, right? Because anything to the left of that is the Congo. But the situation in Uganda. What if we went all the way down? Infrastructure is not bad. We have almost... 7,400 free workers available. You can build infrastructure here. Each infrastructure costs 200 workers, and you can't go over level 10, which makes sense. Concentrate production activity. Ooh. Cities be inside your territory and under complete control. You can build production units. So, concentration camps. So, the buildings are built instantaneously, but um, by concentration camps, you mean just prisons, right? Um... It boosts our stability that way, too. It seems like... Okay, so it sounds like if we put a concentration camp, would that make the ability, the place be nicer to us? Probably not, but, you know. You try it. So 44.9%? 44.9. Nothing really changed there. Mean stability. Nothing really changed, which is a little disappointing. Gunshot echoes. According to the reports in Salisbury in the field, the insurgent uh, leader Joshua Nicomo has been killed in an apparent operation linked to the shootout a few weeks ago. It's unclear what is happening now in the field with his death. There is general confusion as this is written, as some believe that Nicomo is still alive, while others believe that a local warlord might have taken over in a wake of his death. Thus, I propose we set a series of raids in the surrounding villages, in a 30 kilometer radius around the city. This is a precaution to ensure that rebellion is prevented, or at the very least curbed until the situation is brought under control. Acknowledge and approve. Colonia Vavata uh, Shodna's worries. The situation in the Congo continues to deteriorate. Most of the SS units under my command are spent guarding the Congo Dam. There are numbers to win by the day. We've been able to rebuff all attacks on the dam so far, but should anyone break through our defenses, the colony will be utterly ruined. 
Beyond the dam, rebels are running roughshod over the country. Just three days ago, one of the Congo's largest plantations had all its overseers massacred as slaves used SS-style tactics to overcome the guards. Every week, it seems, one of our SS squads goes missing on the march, and searchers find their heads on stakes and their bodies tied to trees with their own intestines. Resistance on the part of the intervention to the Aryan race's rifle dominance is nothing new, of course, but these rebels are being armed, trained, and organized by Reichstadt generals. While it is true that these generals were traitors to the race and follow them, I worry that our arrest on site policy is driving trained dangerous men into the jungle, where they stir up rebellious elements and further hinder the Aryanization of the Congo. Look at the situation. Well, we want to do that one, right? Uh, since we're here, and prisons, let's see. Well, sounds we need one here, so. Um, you want to get another one? We got plenty of workers. Where else are we very high? Like, I don't know how, how far we can push this. I guess Congo. Cameroon. Um, how's Zimbabwe doing? Eh, let's not do Zimbabwe. Ninety percent, ninety-five percent of Cameroon is still pretty good. Anywhere else? Oh, the African disaster. A gruesome death. The situation in Rwanda, Rwanda, cannot have been handled worse. Colonel Babata Kotsvarans was found brutally misfigured and dying. His body had also been partially eaten by animals, and according to the recent reports, maggots were eating him. The SS had trouble identifying his body after he was found. Our best doctors could not save him, despite their best efforts. After a brief investigation, we have concluded that his death happened due to his capture and his subsequent torture by Ugandish militias. We do not know where exactly they are, though I'll rest assured that reprisals have been ordered. However, I'm worried that Rwanda Rwanda is uh, no leadership after Franz's death. I am unsure what has happened to his subordinates, and I fear there are no successors that have been nominated. The area may have to operate without any real leadership at the top. Got for doubt. The African situation. Hotek was, uh, any questions? He was sitting together with other, several other SS officers around a table. Jina Bea and Chimilski were flanked by the Shah, the former completely oblivious to the terrible situation delineated by a superior, and the latter with a steel expression across his face. Wondering if his almost important underlings even understood what transpired from the countless reports, a brisk voice rose among the ranks asking for explanations. Name, rank, name and rank officer, Hutig replied. Standartenführer Schmidt, sir. Are we to understand that due to a negligence from former Reichskommissar Schenk and Müller, not only we lack about intel, but some that we might have been compromised, is that correct? Precisely. Then we have to assume that every native is an enemy, right? A cold smile ran across Hutik's face. Yes, stand out and fear. Everyone might be an enemy. The native woman carrying that what might seem water could be a weapon smuggler. The native child, a trained soldier, an unassuming village, a den of revolters, a war and the incompetence from the previous administration in Central Africa and Sudwest Africa made most of our intel completely useless. We must use everything at hand to eradicate the barbarity that those traitors let happen under their watch. Of course, you have full discretionary power in how you decide to neutralize threats. Any other questions? No, sir. Very well, dismissed. With a brisk hail, the officers rose from their chairs and went out the room in perfect unison. Yes, Hutik thought. To defeat the superhuman, we must descend to their level. We must use our brutality against them. Only then will the land of civilization shine in all of Africa. The true soldiers, of course, never rest. I'm not sure how far I can really push this. Um, do I have anything down here? Yeah, 86%. Boss 1 is still pretty good, though. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, like, can we just make this really great? Concentrate production activity? Nice. Oh, it roads. Max up the roads down here. That's actually really sounds really nice. So we should be able to build things really quickly down there too. Anything else here? No, we're pretty good on stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure how far or fast we can push this, so let's do empty their homes next. Defy the degeneracy that's currently corrupting our nation. Every home must be searched. Every suspect, no matter how tenuous his association with the terrorists, should be incarcerated. Even a terrorist must have a place to rest, and the African continent is full of huts and shacks where natives coordinate their attacks. There might also be sympathizers who house the terrorists. These degenerates are just as guilty as the criminals they abet. Conducting searches in every house will kill two birds with the same stone. Apart from the desk of Colonel Babata des Angolas, Eric Musfeld. The call to resistance from Unitia has indeed led to increased trouble from the natives. Garrison commanders report churlishness from the locals and rural areas, most notably. A scheduled patrol of the outskirts of Luanda failed to make radio contact at the designated time. When a second patrol was sent to backtrack the route, their bodies were found mutilated in a ditch by the side of the road. Upon examination, both the bodies and surrounding area showed signs of a short firefight. No partisan bodies were recovered. The attackers either sustained no casualties or brought their dead with them. 
The brazenness of this attack is concerning. The location of the bodies was such that even if a call for reinforcements had been made, it would be highly unlikely that any of the patrol would be able to reach the area in time, and the violence of the attack only serves to conceal its skill of planning. I find it unlikely that the natives could effectively plan such an attack as this. As I suspect, there exists a dissident element within the German population funneling information to Unitum. An investigation is underway to determine the nature of this traitor's group. Do you think Aryans could advocate such brutality? So, like, seriously, can we just build nothing but camps up here? But at the same time, I want to build, make sure we have enough prisons where we need them. Well, I guess we're going to go back to Gochas. Gochas, Goss? Here. How many more prisons do we need down here? Building prisons and citizens don't have anything. Okay, so I don't think it, we had enough time here for it to take effect, so that's fine. Um, but look at this. Ah, oh, 10 out of 10. Oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful, my friends. So beautiful. Actually, how's the economy doing? 8.9, not bad. It's going up and it's going to dip down. Good, 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 good. And growth is almost 1%. Almost 1%, even though our credit rating is really bad. Afrikaners and Botswana seek border citizenship. And in the recent weeks, a notable trends began to emerge in the border regions between Botswana region and the border republic. Prior to the annexation of Botswana by the Reichstag, the region was under the control of South Africa, and was home to tens of thousands of Afrikaner settlers. Many are currently prosperous farmers and merchants and are especially concentrated in parts of Kalahari Desert. With the annexation, it would seem likely that many of these Botswana Afrikaners would prefer to live in the border republic for various political, social, and economic reasons, according to the Border Ministry of Home Affairs. Approximately 1,100 180 about Swan Afrikaners have crossed the border into the Republic in the past month and have requested asylum pursuant to receiving Boer citizenship of these. Approximately 800 have been deported back into the Reichstag, with the remainder having been taken into temporary custody. The situation is untenable, with local police office officials reporting that further attempts at migration are extremely likely. It is the recommendation of the colonial Babalata von Botswana that the Boer Republic be forced to open the borders to the Botswana Afrikaners in order to leave the situation. Make, make them open the country? It's none of our business. Cut out the rot. Ah, oh, suspicious. Oh, suspicions of treason within the local German population have been verified. Following the massacre of patrols outside Luanda, the investigations that were made into past connections of South African war recruits before their immigration from Germany, it was revealed that of the Luanda garrison, a large proportion of the South Africa war recruits had maintained connections with university socialist groups during the Brugge Creek. It is likely that they were sent here primarily to remove the corrupting influence from polite German society with the competency and battle of secondary concern. And with this knowledge, it was a simple task to determine which of these men had maintained unauthorized contacts with the natives. An interrogation revealed a small clique actively funneling information information to Unita itself. Once the clique was identified, all garrison members with socialist backgrounds were detained and executed in short order. I have full confidence that with this group eliminated, Unita's capabilities in the field will drastically decrease and order will be restored shortly. Will we never be free of partisans of Bolshevism? Never. Reports on the merchants of resistance groups in Kenya. Oh, look at that, thank you. From the desk of Colonel Bevata, Kenya, Maximilian Graben, a dissident voices have a long history in Kenya, back in 1947, when our administration has not yet solidified. The same dissident we now know as Kea established an organization called the Luo Thrift and Trading Co Corporation, a private company run by Odinga, Oding, Oginga, Odinga himself. The purpose of this corporation was to advance the ethnic interests of the Luo tribes, assisting them in establishing businesses and offering financial and technical advice. The corporation was shut down by the SS raid in 1949 when air and control of Kenya was tightened, but we have received word that is now active again, operating in secret and settled regions of black market. Between the chaos sovereignty decree, the Luo Brigades, and now re-emergence of the Sinatious Organization, it has become apparent that the time for a trap to be sprung is now. The suspected headquarters of the Luo Thrift and Trading Corporation will be raided in the days ahead, as will be known as the sites of congregation of the previously established Luo Brigades. In one fell swoop, the SS in Kenya will purge the territory of those savages that would dare snarl at our hand. Shut them down. Shut them down. Still green, 85, 90%. Ooh. Cameroon's looking really good, though. Too good. For their own good. We just built nothing but concentration camps around here. Would that be good? Oh, another month has passed. Okay, so... Keep my shoop. There you go. Lots of prisons. Lots and lots and lots of concentration camps. Good. I'm just going to build them randomly in different areas here too as well. Just because we have the bodies for it right now. And that'll help us out probably. Where we don't have a prison already, I'm just going to build some. Oh, we're out. God dang it. God, we already used up all those bodies? God dang. That was fast. Mozambique is still pretty good. Um...
We still have quite a few over here as well. Do they have a prison? Nope. Lots and lots of prisons. 100 cuts. You got the show rebels and soldiers alike have been continuously attacking military bases here as of late. I'm not sure how long this has been going on, but the first reports of these incidents came up a few weeks ago. I can only assume that this is due to the state of leadership up in Uganda. While we've sent out more men to better fend off these attacks, our supply lines, and indeed many of our said reinforcements, have been attacked by a ruined militia. The gear of attack so far happened a few days ago. Supply trains were looted en masse as a massive offensive on our bases claimed at least 2,000. I do believe these elements were, or events were coordinated. They happened on the same day. It's impossible to not see the connection. Thus, I must recommend that you send more men and material to Rwanda or Rundi to supply the local garrison. We must strengthen our defenses against these dual threats. Political purifications. Dark, warm blood continued to gush out of the tour open wound across the man's thighs. Panic began to course through the room about as fast, terribly fast, as adrenaline was pumping throughout the armed man's body. Strings of curses poured forth from the German's lips as he rocketed a chair up against the doorknob, hoping to buy his withering laugh at just a few more minutes. Stab, stab for this, said the man, as he shakily adjusted his glasses while smearing blood across his lens. The middle of the folder was already ruined and crumpled, but it lay inside the answers towards the reason for which his life began to feel as fleeting as it was now, to whom it may concern. It has come to my attention that following the ending of the open conflict against the South Africans and their American allies, coupled with the reorganization of the Reich's territories of Africa under the Reichskommissar Hans Hutig, a number of administrative errors have come into the light regarding the handling of new Reichstag. In accordance with the con contingencies filed under the Reich's Foreign Occupied Territories Protocol, I have thus requested that. All is for a simple request. Reichskommissar Hutig had some difficulty in his administration and is now I'm a traitor? The man whispered to himself, rocking as he sniffed towards, uh, sniffled towards a burning pain ac spreading across his thigh. The stab had turned dark and crusted as visions of his wife in Germania flew across him, as chips of wood exploded across the room and memories of Hutig's honor guard came rushing in, pistols drawn. To the victor goes the blood. And of course, empty the homes, because even though we're at growth, we need to make sure we improve the situation here just a little bit more, because this is not looking good. Even Ken is not looking great as well. So hopefully we can do well here. We're still on, uh, should be medium, but yeah, should be a medium. And after that, we will go ahead and do empty the cities. Uh, we can wait a little bit of that. More Burgundian system, less stability, but more military spending factor, and then more political power. Why not? Because we are actually, oh boy, we're already running out. That's not good. Burgundy might have the right idea, but its methods are revisionist. What is the olden shots talk of an Aryan future worth if Himmler stoops down to the level of enlisting Frenchmen and Belgians? They might as well be Muller for all I care. Even their SS is degenerate. Pretending their status gives them a higher placement in the racial hierarchy than other Aryans. On the right shot, however, things will be different. I will make sure of it. Himmler will learn from me. Once I am finished with this continent, its inhabitants will be more Burgundian than the Burgundians themselves. Emptying their homes. Schnell, Schnell, move out. Amelia woke up in the middle of the night to an angry dude in uniform screaming in her face. Her roommates were terrified just as she was, staring at the rifles pointed against them. The soldier kicked up or kicked her in the back, screaming orders in a language that Amelia didn't understand, but most likely he was telling her to get out. It's not like Amelia wasn't used to the abuse from the Germans, but being forced to leave her own house with her roommates was at gunpoint was something unheard of. She realized. She wasn't the only one awake that night. The entire village was being rounded up and brought to the train station plaza. It was the most important place in the town, mostly because people went there to go watch the trains. The soldiers lined up all the town inside the plaza. In neat lines ordered by height, the first thing Amelia noticed was that the station was lit up and a cattle train was waiting in the tracks. This is very strange because Amelia has never seen a train coming this late at night. An old and sick German officer was scrutinizing the line of people in front of him with deadly glare, only interrupting his investigation to answer his subordinates. After a moment that seemed like an eternity, the officer d d dined to reveal the reason why he came there in the middle of the night. Where is MPLA terrorist? With his elementary Portuguese mixed with a very heavy German accent, the, the man looked like a character caricature of a Nazi officer, but no one in the plaza felt like laughing. Most people were staring at their feet, trying to avoid his glare. You know where the terrorists are, yeah? Still no answers. The officer shouted something in German to the soldiers nearby, and they started moving towards the crowd. And then they started grabbing one person every ten. Amelia couldn't finish praying to not be caught that she found herself getting dragged from the group. She screamed and screamed, but to no avail, she was shoved into the train, scrammed together with other terrified people. As the train left the station, Amelia prayed once more to whoever might hear her to keep her safe. She took the midnight train, going anywhere. Oh boy. Oh boy. But overall, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the werewolves against the silver versus gather our strength increase arm shipments versus loot and burn the way home co-op the natives abtalon for afrikaner shavaya recover the boars uh, salt the earth and spark the uprisings destroy the rebels leadership versus close the border greatly reduce revolt propagation and overall the town's recording there's just a little bit more support for Gather our strength. If the Stadt wants the most effective, tried and true method of rooting out native partisans, then rolling on rivers or rivers to pillage the countryside into submission is simply not going to cut it. We need to be smart. If we want to get the best results, then we need to play to our strengths, our superior intellect and will. We need to form our own great 
Einsatzgruppen. Cold and calculated purges and selected hotbeds is the best way to root out resistance to our administration. Small scale terrorism will not be adequate. Only with large scale suppression of revolting populations will we be ever able to claw back the dark continent to its conquerors. We'll make better use of our reorganized SS. Absolutely. Now we need to probably start saving some of our political power here too, but that's okay. We'll get there eventually. Uh, we're not really growing our economy too much, but with all the camps that we built, the happy little fun camps, it's alright. All right, let's see. Where is Oh go over there? Shootouts in the mines. Oh boy. But here, can we at least get another camp? Ah, thank you. Oh, the Madziwa mines are in chaos today, as the Zimbabwean rebel forces have engaged our guard station there early this morning. Thousands of rebels surrounded the mines, demanding our surrender. After seven hours of relentless fighting, the guards managed to repel them from the mines, although they have suffered significant casualties in the process. The advantageous position saved them, although should the mines come under attack further, it is almost certain that they will fall into rebel hands. More supplies and reinforcements must be sent to Zimbabwe in order to safeguard the cities and critical resource centers, such as the mines. We cannot afford to cut back on support. If we do, our rule will collapse in anarchy. More rebel attacks should come, and we must stop them no matter the cost. Absolutely. So we wanted more soldiers uh, or workers. Um, Cameroon, Mozambique, and Congo. This is going to not too bad. 51%, 51 52% is pretty bad, but other than that, means to be required. Oh. Do we get more guns? Encourage uprisings? No. Nah. Direct assaults. Adds 1% stability. Is that really worth doing? It doesn't seem like it's really worth doing at all. Devastation is at 27. Devastation per tick. Bonus devastation per tick. Well, we can do it, why not? Nice. A new African Dom. Crack, crack, crack. Blood and howls of the African flew through the air as the Germans' whips continued to sear through the slaves' flesh while the Rex Commissar's steely gaze continued to peer on, while the traitor's slave contemporaries looked onwards with cries and tears in subordination, treachery, conspiracy against the Reichstadt. And furthermore, the Reichs Kommissar himself. He could hardly believe it that after the destruction of Siegfried Müller's incompetence and Wolfgang Schenk's lack of will to act, these venomous lands continued to defy the will of Hans Hurtig, the very will of the Reich itself. Before he arrived at his post, Africa was a sullen mess of inferiority, mismanagement, and resistance against the Aryan way. National daddyism was meant to change these ways, purge these terrible jungles from the gross and decadent ways. And yet, national daddyism has failed. These African dudes haven't re just refused to give him. They've gone a step further and have dared to refuse the will of Hansu Tig in his own camp. National Socialism provided not the miracle that would cleave this continent asunder and provide for a greater rule by the might of the Aryan, however. What it did provide was a vision. A vision for things to come, for what uh, the Reichstag needed to breathe life into these terrible days so that all traitors may find only a painful death, and that all the pure and strong may survive. Every man enlisted, every citizen under surveillance, and every enemy of the Reichstag upon the cross. Rex Komasa Hutik took a few steps forward, grabbing an assault rifle and pulling back the charging handle as the boots kicked up the sands of West Africa. Summary execution. All of them, the Rex Komasa said. Such words only bore several minutes of butcher and bloodshed across these terrible sands. Where they failed, we shall survive. In which we're going to go with camp equalization to get even more political power, because we need more political power immediately. Oh. Uh. Recommend a report. New general guidelines for the SS Concentrationslager Tupa. For the Reichstadt's purpose of aerianizing Africa. To be realized, it is necessary that each member of the SS understand that he is not to engage in militaristic decadence. This must be upheld on the Concentrationslager. More than anywhere else, there also must be no degeneracy permitted. All SS personnel must refuse luxuries if there is to be any moral consistency in us detaining Aryans due to degenerate behavior. It must be clear all Aryans are equal and should be treated equally. Degeneracy is allowed for no one, for none of us. No one. Many of the SS concentrations lager, Chupa, must live a life no more luxurious than that of the internees. New evidence discovered against Shank. What the heck? Find attached. <clears throat> Alongside this missive, conclusive reports or proof of our long standing suspicions of the snake of Wolfgang Schenk's misdeeds. Locked away in the far corners of Vinhook, we have discovered records of both communications and with and even illicit material support given to rebel organizations like UNITA and the MPLA. Many of the documents bear Schenk's own signature and included in the documents will be found first hand reports from Schenk's albiters, secretaries, and underlings that assisted in Schenk's crimes who were willing to cooperate with their investigation in exchange for lighter punishments accordingly. It is recommended that they all be shot rather than interned. These discoveries both close the case on Schenk and explain the arbitrary and bold in nature of resistance elements in Sudwest Africa, thus so is a traitor, it's radio silence. Communication from Kig Kigali has been lost today, we have no idea what exactly has happened, but the last reports over the last couple hours have been extremely worrying. 
Colonia Babata, France, reports that Ogandish militias are destroying the radio towers and all means of communication. This comes as a surprise to us. Kalagli, uh, Kigali was very well defended, however, in his last communication to us, uh, Colonia Babata has informed us that he will simply be moving operations to Gitaga. The city remains secure against attack for now, and he can make contact with Kul Kulamane there. For now, we have a limited information on what is happening in Rwanda. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. That's actually not good at all. Um, where are we at? 40? Devastation Protect is not enough. Please, more devastation. Please, 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 please. More political power would be nice. But you spend that much political power, so you don't really get too much from that at all. Encourage uprisings? I'm not sure. I mean, we might wait and see what happens. Yeah, keep going one, two, and three. Nice. Since we have maxed out infrastructure here, we're just going to do it in Mozambique. And over here, too. Because this is separate, and this is separate as well. So overall, not bad. Not bad at all. How many do we have? 3,000? Uh, ins Gandish Insurgency and Bumstadt. The ongoing fight against bandits, warlords, and guerrillas in the Uganda region has entered a new phase, according to Rogerson. Over the past three weeks, no fewer than four attacks on German soldiers stationed in the city of Bumstadt have been pe penetrated, resulting in three deaths and 11 injuries. Two of these injuries were so dire as to necessitate evacuation to Quillamane for emergency treatment. Our sources within the population of Bumstadt have indicated a new urban guerrilla group, the Granda Army of Popular Liberation, is most likely responsible for these attacks. The individual attackers, while relatively few in number, have proven difficult to identify. After every attack, they flee into the shanty towns and alleyways of Bumstadt with the suspected support of local communes or communities. We recommend that the central government authorize immediate retaliation. Smoke them out? Smoke them out. Actually, where's that now? 50, eh, uh, it's about the same. Means stability, not bad. Not bad. Losing some stability as well. So, where else can we build some camps? Ah, uh, up here, yes. Thank you. Economy is barely growing, but debt to GDP is doing quite well. We almost have a billion in surplus. After this, we're still going to be spending a lot, but thousands of Swavlo dissidents arrested. Our investigation into Sam Nujoma's victory parade through Vinhook during Swavlo's brief occupation of the city has been concluded. Through their always efficient means of intelligence gathering, the SS has incarcerated and interrogated hundreds upon th hundreds of participants in these rallies, each of whom have either confessed to the crimes personally or been found guilty by either photographic evidence or eyewitness accounts. Combined with the numerous casualties Swavlo undertook in their arrival and subsequent eviction for Windhook, it is likely that the permanent detention of these supporters and avatars will uproot both the Swavlo organization itself and any support it might have won amongst the East easily swayed minds of the savages. The concentration camps nearest to Vinhook have all been alerted to the impending new residents about to arrive in their communities. Order is ensured in Namibia? Let's hope so. Oh, we can do this one. Find members, too. Ooh. It's gonna hurt GDP, but that's okay. The Grosse Afrikanische SS. Yes. Yes, capitalization. Stahl Hitler, Hans Hütig. Peace within his office, going back and forth as a growing inferno of African rebellions has spread across the Great Plains that Hudik had under control for so long. Yet, yeah, despite the terror he has managed to sue into the hearts of countless subhumans under his reign, and the gallons of blood he has managed to spill across these arid African wastes, the Stahatler knew that if he continued to act on his own, then he would find himself drawn and quartered by the same rebels he had done so far along. So that's when a moment of brilliance dawned upon Hans. Yes, it was true, these rebellious partisans crept in every corner and every shadow, ready to tear apart the Reichstag and all who reigned over it, and yet, wasn't such a war story of partisanship and death so familiar? Hans Hutig thought of his home, and of the home's victory past the decadent powers of the world during the Second Valkyrie, and in doing so, remembered the angels of death throughout the Vaterland, the Schutzstaffel. Immediately, Stahitler, uh, Hutig rushed to his desk, where he began the forwarding of an official transmission to the German Reich and the Oldenstadt. The mere request for the general genesis of the Gross Afrikanische SS, whereupon the blood of every African rebel shall be split upon a truer, truer Afrikarian's dagger as the throat of revolution is slit. My honor is God loyalty. Also, since we're down here, I do want to do this as well. Um, since this is our home base, anyways. That should really raise this up by quite a bit, right? Maybe. The greatest story I never told of you, about that, please go right ahead. Happy 1968, everybody. Point one one, huh? Could use more roads. Nice. Explosion in Luan, the colonial, uh, colonial act. Gentlemen, now that we're all here, let's begin the meeting. Eric announced as Siegfried Hansen, the liaison from Quillamane, exited the bathroom and took a seat. I'm hearing that you are having trouble putting down subhuman savages. Would any of you care to explain why, or should I just send a lot of you to the camps right now? That dude Shank was too soft on the savages, piped up one of the assembled garrison commanders. It's no surprise that the Untermenschen react more fiercely against proper Aryan rule. Well, then let's redouble our efforts. More troops, harsher crackdowns. Unfortunately, we're still running low on manpower, and Quillamane still hasn't responded to the last request for more troops. The meeting continued likewise, with Eric and the assembled commanders shouting various curses at the rebellious natives, the traitorous Shank, and the cowards in Germania. The atmosphere was so heated that almost no one took notice of Siegfried's departure from the room to take a call from the capital. What everyone did notice, however, was explosion emanating from the suitcase Siegfried left on the table. An explosive conclusion, but the battle for Victoria Sea. 
The economy of Uganda is largely based around the production of agricultural goods for export, both within the Reichstadt and, at least to an extent, abroad. One critical juncture of this economy is traded across the Victoria Sea, the vast tropical lake whose shores touch many regions of the Reichstag, along with the Italian East Africa. Now, that juncture is being threatened. The warlords which have threatened Uganda's traditional kingdoms and chiefdoms have turned their gates to Uganda's ports. Reports have come of ongoing battles between various factions in uh, local coastal towns like Jinja and Taiba and Namulanda. Uh, Namulanda. This fighting has disrupted local commerce and claimed dozens of lives so far, with the garrison primarily concentrated in Bumstadt. It's unlikely that these classes will end anytime soon. Mustn't the coffee flow, though. Ooh. Our unsound scoop will be able to quickly and precisely deal with the problematic independence groups. They often aren't too risky in nature, and due to their expert training, these missions will often end up being a success. To unlock actions for the gross African and SS Einsatz group, you will need to invest for the time into expanding it via foci. These actions will allow to gather equipment and men, and at the end to launch operations of the continent. Ooh, man, only 250. Oh, goodness. For werewolf organizations, huh? Increase the ranks. Um. Well, can we send them across the area? Oh, God, I want to do that so badly. God, I am too much of, like... person enjoys this too much. Burn them all? We give our political power that way, too. And then... Ooh. ooh. Abteilung? South the Earth. Well, we're going to go this way. I'm going to keep this going here. I think we can just wait for this stuff, too, so... Panic in Lupin. An important member of the Lupin city administration has gone missing. After a day and no clue of his whereabouts, we have concluded that he has been abducted by insurgents. Under normal circumstances, we will be able to handle such cases, but these are not normal circumstances. I understand that our resources are stretched thin in these tumultuous times, however, I must ask you once more to send additional funding to Zimbabwe. We do not need men, just money. If we receive this aid, we will be able to find the administrator and ensure safety. If our control over Zimbabwe is to be preserved, any control we have right now will be crucial in the weeks ahead. Once more, I am asking you to send aid. Anything else would go an extremely long way to defeat the rebels. Sure. Burn them all. No more exceptions, no more looking away. There's only one cure for degeneracy. Complete extermination. I don't care what some pencil-pushing propagandist in Germania says. I don't care about however many villages filled with subhumans I have to raise. This continent will be ruled by Aryans, and it shall be free. Free from degeneracy. Free from subhuman subhumans. Anyone who stands in the way of an Aryan Africa will be eradicated. But chaos in Luanda. With ringing yells, Eric allowed or shoved the collapsed table off his legs and staggered to his feet. All around him were garrison commanders doing the same. The next thing he was aware of was the blurring of the Yoanda uh, emergency siren, followed by the muffled shouting of the colonial aunt gods as they rushed into the room, nearly stumbling over the wood and rubble that littered the floor. Sir, are you right? Are you wounded? Eric heard from the nearest guard, ringing and finally starting to die down. My body's bruised, my pants are scorched, but the dude's mission failed. I'm still standing. A change of pair of pants will have to wait, sir. You need to launch an attack on the city. Those dogs? Why haven't they been slaughtered yet? There's too many of them. Our forces are being overrun all over Luanda. We have to evacuate you and the surviving garrison commanders to a nearby town. Retreat before these animals. An urge to seize the man's gun and shoot him dead for even suggesting such welled up inside Eric's mind, but the sound of gunfire explosions outside convinced him that perhaps it was time to practice the better part of valor. Is there any more men in Luanda? You were in this round, Untermensch. 47% is a little unshaky. Everyone else is really good. Like, ooh, Bongi, Shadi? We need more concentration camps. Don't quote me on that one. But yeah. Huh. We'll see. I love building concentration camps. I don't know. I already got striked warning once. I don't know how many times I can actually say that, but whatever. Pleasant trees are no poison. Dry to its coated and crusted flavor of dust, and any lacking any form of pleasantry or greatness. Alex Komsaras understood that this was the way of life for all true Aryan sons of the Valhalla, here in the Reichstadt. Yet he knew that not all were pleased. Not all who served under him were uh, understood the necessity for the strengthening of their souls in these writhing, writhing times. And yet the stench of poison would not wrench this true son of Germany from his cleanse yet. What is this? What the heck is this? Hutig asked as a mess hall fell to silence. Two German officers looked onwards at the pastry that they specially baked now within the Rex Commissar's furious grasp. Silence? Effing silence? I assume you're looking to sneak it into my meal then for poison, isn't it? Trying to kill me, Hans Rage. No, sir, it is a Berliner, sir. That is all it is, sir, one of the officers said. Ah, a dish from home, the Rex Commissar asked with a smile as the two officers nodded silently. Hutig's smile faded away, however, as he threw the pastry to the ground and proceeded to crush the pastry under his foot in a series of crushing thrusts with his boot. Take them to the whipping post immediately, Hutig stated, as the two officers were dragged away screaming. No true son of Germany would fancy themselves anything more than a warrior's feast from here on until the end of days, Hutig screamed as he stormed off from the Messal's tent. Such hedonism remains salacious and foul.
Up here, got recovery. Ah. The administrator we has been recovered. After intense searching, we were able to pinpoint his location into a shack on the shore of Lake Kariba, where at least a hundred rebel guards were posted. While it was difficult to remove the presence from this area, we had the element of surprise and better training and ended any hopes that they had a resistance. For now, we are sending reinforcements to search for any larger rebel cells in the vicinity. Overall, this mission has been successful and will buy us the needed time to build up against the rebels plaguing us. I'll continue to update you with any significant changes to the current situation, as per usual. Finally, success for once. Call Africa Khan and Willie Reich. Uh, it sounds like I should wait for this one. Um, but let's do it anyways. A brand new day is rising in Africa when Stahel Hutik made public his project for the Aryan homeland and the Dark Continent. His detractors couldn't believe he could turn it into a reality, but today is a day he proved them all wrong after we talk about support weapons. My apologies. Or really. Research speed? No. Let's go more Apple first. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Whether there, there was jungle and savagery, our Stott Hitler brought civilization and industry. Whether there was rebellion, our Stott Hitler brought order and peace. And whether there was degeneracy, our Stott Hitler brought the finest examples of the Aryan race. Noble in spirit and tempered by the struggle against the, the subhumans. Many people plotted against our just cause. From the savage native terrorists to the Judeo Bolsheviks in Washington and their South African lapdogs, but now that we defeated all of them, nothing stands in the way of the pan African Aryan Empire. Now, we reap the fruits of our labor. As the Vatalan gains another piece of living drum, to a hundred years of peace in Africa! Hmm. A uh, weapon we will go. Oh, why does this come down here now? Oh, we look at that. We have 22 factories. 21 now. Oh, I love it. Oh, actually, we can do that more and more and more. They're actually a reward. Oh, yes, please. Oh, they're dying. Good. Let them all die. By order of the Reichs Kommissar Hans Hutig, by the powers vested within him under the guidance of the Father Fuhrer and all of the greater German Reich, the administration of Gross Afrikanische Reichstadt has found the following men guilty and in readiness for immediate execution. Obersturmfuhrer Lothar von Henwitz, for persisting past regulated nighttime hours alongside a state of drunkenness. Sturmann Sigmund Koenig, for participating in the unapproved gathering of Reichstadt men participating in a source of entertainment deriving from. The execution ceremony was long, arduous, and informal as much as the elite executioner belabored it, with fanciful war work and legalistic symbology, yet that's exactly what each of those effing traitors deserve. Hours kept with that weave bag over their heads, in darkness as this despicable sun bore down upon each and every one of them, tied to those rotten sticks of wood and in a swath of fiery sands. Yes, this was it. This is what the Rex Commissar wanted. Africa purified, cleansed, with a nary soul who dared spoke against him any longer. And only this solidified empire to call his domain. Finally, when these men's blood would coat the sands of this foul desert, their life blood would give rise to something new, something beautiful. A domain molded by Hansutig, for Hansutig ma made of Hansutig. Fire! The Hauptschirmfeuer cried, as an explosion of rifles echoed up, and heated shell casings hit the sands around them. Every one of the men who dared to cross Hans Hutig have fallen, and now a new arrow is born for the Gross Afrikaner Shell Reichstadt. A new black sun dawns. That's not bad. If anything, I want to get more cities too, so get more growth. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Save some political power and get some more growth here. Oh, oh boy, yeah. There you go. Slightly more growth, maybe. Ooh, 1.16. So once we get that done, we're going to pay off all the debt, and then we're just going to reinvest it. That's fine. It costs some political power, but that's okay, whatever. I love national socialist economics. Monthly population growth. I mean, we're not. There's already so many people here that doesn't really matter. More political power. Uh, let's see. Luanda. Sounds like a problematic place, but we need an admin office down here. We're going to show militias block Bumstadt. There have been some disturbing new developments and ongoing Ugandan unrest. The militias, believed to be under the command of the warlord Idi Amin, have seized many of the main roads which connect the capital Bumstadt to other important cities and ports in the region. These militias have established a variety of checkpoints and roadblocks, making normal traffic all but impossible for most. It is believed that at least three Germans have been killed in separate incidents of these roadblocks, while road transport for garrison has become precarious at best. In short, the government of Uganda is under siege in its own capital, with little relief in sight. Don it, don it, don it. Once it goes below 40%, uh, we'll probably do another focus after that one too. Yeah. Because there we are. That's 61%, 100%. Oh my gosh. Ubangi. Rwanda. Where is this one? Ubangi Shadi. I thought it was around here. Oh, that's not good. Ooh, that's really not good at all. You thought building up a ton of concentration camps would actually help them out here. But apparently not. There you go. Oh, look at this. Oh! Acting Uganda. There we go. Okay. Um, send supplies to garrisons. Add the clone of Avata. Send in the guys. Anything else around there? Maybe? No? You know what? We'll do it anyways, because we can. 
So what is that going to end up doing for them? Oh, it went quite a bit up. That's actually really nice. That's good. It better not become... Oh, oh, we can do stuff here too. Diamonds for men. Increase of GDP growth. Eh, we could. Poison food supplies. Decrease stability decay. Absolutely. Work the flesh. Get a couple more guns. Direct assaults. Nice. Devastation is not high enough yet. So current devastation is 103, huh? Means stability requires 30%. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, Hans. Where's your ha funny haircut? Increased weapon supplies? Oh, it's up here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this is not good. I don't like seeing the, the demilitarized zone there. A pure Africa, my friends. A pure Africa. Um, up after that, I don't want to decrease the growth. I don't mind hurting your GDP, but I still want to keep our growth good. Burn and loot the way home. Central and South West Africa are choked full of semi-functioning political entities that are actively defying our administrators. These regions, for all practical purposes, have been lost for now. The situation is bad, but like it hasn't hopeless if we act now. We need to consolidate our men and secure abandoned and capture supplies now, before rebel factions are able to make, take them for themselves and hide them deep in the enemy territory. We must act decisively now before the degenerates can secure even more assets. Now, I think I read this one last time, too. Um, getting up the OFN. The boards won't like that. The boards won't like this. The boards are our underlings under the Reichstadt. They have no choice but to obey orders that we give them. Whether they like it or not, who dig is a man who's ensured that there continues to survive amongst the anarchy in Africa, and he can be very well the people's demise. If he so chooses to do so, and they know it. It's time to utilize the boards, their soldiers, some materials. Everything they have is now material to be utilized for the survival of our state. Concrete. Hans felt his hands shake as he gripped around his rifle, his legs simply stopping. It was empty, the whole city or the surrounding few blocks at least. There was nothing. These brutalist cities, these cons concrete rectangles and monuments to monotony. They laid empty. The winds whipped through the city, providing the empty soundtrack to a dead city. It wasn't that nobody was around or that people kept their heads down as things had felt some months ago, but there was simply a total void of activity as far as the eye could see. And Hans' guts coiled as he realized just how further beyond there was nothing. Hans, you feel it too, Klopfer called out from behind him. Turning around, the uh, pair met eyes. Klopfer looked terrible, and it wasn't hard to look like you'd been dragged through the mud nowadays. This was the end of their shift, and the sun was starting to rise again. It was like the pair had been doing laps around a city that could only have existed in the mind of a madman. The howling wind hiding whispers that were growing louder with every passing day. Hans turned another corner and found himself within more, more of the same. Had it not been for the road signs hardly changing names or the pair of natives that hung from the lamppost, Hans would have sworn he was exactly where he'd started the patrol. Peering down the empty street, Hans could only make out the faint silhouette of another soldier, dragging his feet over the concrete sidewalk which stood four feet wider than had any right to be. Hans stopped himself again. I don't think I can do this anymore. Turning around to speak with Klopfer, Hans found himself confronted with a road that stretched beyond the horizon, the concrete on either side of it, and nothing else. Nobody's home. Oh, I didn't get to the comments as well. Some of them included, uh, let's see... Have I ever considered doing the Reinega den Sudan path? So basically, before the Civil War ended and we could do like one of two two paths, we chose the left side for Brutamord. There was the other one that basically lets you use gas attack completely, and basically the OFN is going to kill you if you do that one. I've never done that one, but I know the OFN will probably pretty much declare war on you and you're going to die immediately that way, so that's why I don't choose that path. Someone says we should go Burgundian system, which we're trying somewhat to. Why are we a bunch of fascists? Fascism is just liberalism, uh, like diet liberalism. Uh, someone says we should go with the Joneses, which we did. Uh, and someone, and, uh, actually, uh, quite a few of you guys at the time of recording asked about the sub mod and the link to the sub mod. Apparently, it was broken. I just went to it and put that new link in the description below. Hopefully, it works at the time of recording. No guarantees, but I do hope it works. So, actually, oh, that's not bad. Uh, make sure we got plenty enough guns. We're going to need a lot of guns where we're headed. So, uh, yes, yes. The city has been. A oh, we need six divisions in one of the states and you got it. Okay, that's fine. You know what? We can send these guys over. Uh, so it's around Uganda. Okay, that's okay. There you go. That should be good enough. They're motorized. They should be able to move fast enough so we can secure it once again. Um, anything else? We need more uh, slaves. How's this looking right now? Mozambique. Uh, Cameroon. Nice. Well, let's get weapon. God, I want more political power. How's the economy doing? Yeah, that growth is really bad. My God, look at that surplus. Now... Like I said, we're gonna wait. Oh, attack, stun cut. Uh, we could try it. Oh, that basically did nothing. We basically got nothing out of that. Oh, god dang it. It's fine. It's whatever. Inflation's really high. Actually, uh, but this is giving us more growth as well. 1% more growth. Or counter pennies. Up to 3% total reduction. That's not bad, too. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad either, but we just need to 
Start spinning a little bit more. Hmm. Keep getting bigger numbers, bigger numbers. What was MPK is gonna have to do as well? There you go. Diamonds for man. Now we're not gonna do this. I don't want these guys to come up here. Declares we've got independence. Situation dire. Forces loyal to E. e uh, Amina sees a bowman shot in full. Garrison is almost completely wiped out or has been evacuated. A government officials evacuated by boat to south. The government of Uganda region has fallen. E.D. Amina elected to proclaim independence in mere hours. That's disturbing. Yeah, no. Are you guys up there yet? Oh my god, you guys take so long. Well, even if they do rebel, I'll be honest, Like, I'm going to probably replay this off screen to make sure that everything is nice and clean. But, uh, the, the Wallenstadt. Uh, we'll go this way, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to read this again, please go right ahead. I'm pretty sure I read that one, right? Uh, have I not read this one? Yeah, I've read this one, so. A reminder of the peoples of the Boer Republic. Due to your status as a Wallenstadt, the Boers are given a degree of autonomy not permitted to other aspects of the Groth's Afrikanische Reichstadt. This is in order to be certain that the Aryan Boer peoples oppress and rule the natives and Englishmen are able to experience inherent freedom of Aryanism. This, however, comes with several responsibilities to the Reichstadt. It should not be taken as full independence such as a thing should never be desired. As a Wallenstadt, the foremost responsibility of the Boer peoples is loyalty to the Reichstadt and the Stadt Hitler SS, as well as loyalty to the national daddyism and the principles that govern all who adhere to it. You are still, for all purposes and functions, peoples of the Reichstadt, and again must adhere to any and all orders, prohib prohibitions, laws, or requests you made of you by the Stadt Hitler SS. This is not to be seen as a restriction of said freedoms, but as the full realization of the freedom and power granted to the Aryan race. After all, only weak men see freedom as a power to act as one wishes. That is hedony and laziness, and is a form of slavery to the desires of man. The only way for an Aryan to be truly free is to freely choose a life of strength, spotsonism, and obedience. And as members of the Vassalenstadt, all of you are to be held to the same standard. May national socialism burn in your hearts forever, and the Untermensch burn in the graves. The boards won't like that. I want to decrease the influence of the ANC, though. Hmm, it's not bad. Cover African military records. <clears throat> well, we could empty the cities. Please make sure we get there in time, guys. Come on. Go, go, go. And again, the roads are pretty bad around here, so. It is what it is. Oh, there goes those guys. My god, even these motorized suck so much. Why are you taking so long? 1.8. Get a remove over here. You're slower than everyone else. How? Oh my goodness. Deployment, force, and infrastructure. That's a bunch of BS, man. Where is everybody? Why are you so down? Why are you still down there? These you literally have orders to garrison everything here. Right? No? There you go. This is so stupid. Incredibly stupid. Uh Oh, burn lit the way home. Um after that I'll tell them for Africa Shell Privilega. As our army and Einsatz group occur more casualties, it's becoming increasingly difficult to fill our ranks with full-blooded Aryans. Though we don't like it, we'll have little choice to bolster our ranks with natives. The Abdalung for Afrikanische Freiwillige, or Office for the African Volunteers, will ever be established. While no sane African would be volunteered to fight for us, it would nonetheless be trivial to bolster our ranks with natives with corrosion and liberally kidnapping hostages. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. And I'm not going to read that once, because I'm going to go back and make sure that they never rise up. Find the members. It seems that eliminating the black leaders is not enough to bring down the rioters and the machinations against us. In that case, we will simply extend the search down to the single terrorist, and this time we'll make sure that none of our units will be slacking at their job. We are so close to achieving our pan-African Aryan utopia, and we will not tolerate laziness or incompetence from our SS units. Very good. Loot and burn the way home. Now, I read this one earlier, actually. Yeah, I read this one, I think, before. So, but we, before we faded and faded out, so if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead, but root and stem. A proper the desk of Colonial Bavata des Angolas, Eric Mudfsfeld. Celebration at riding or ridding the garrison strengths of Bolshevik terror traitors has proven premature. Angola's administrative class has grown soft under the years of Miller's lax and treasonous rule. Attempts to restore Aryan discipline have backfired drastically, with what began as a strike amongst low level bureaucrats boiling over to the point that the mayor of Luanda has actively refused orders by the colonial's aunt to condemn dissent against my legitimate rule. 
Troops have been redirected from neighboring towns of Luanda to secure the city whilst plans could be made to storm the mayor's office. Several garrison units assigned to the mayor's protection as well as the protection of Luanda's administrative centers have mutinied in support of the traitors. Whilst the mutinous troops are outnumbered by loyal units, it has been observed that they have been distributing arms to the striking bureaucrats. With its added numbers, their force is believed to be similar to ours, to ours in size. Please advise. I advise you to do this like someone, incomp someone competent would. Sukan on Venectim. Who tickles not pleased? One can tell that by looking at him, his eyes squinted and teeth clenched in rage. How long must it take to find and shoot a dozen traitors? He bellowed. The level and cop and surrounding him it was incredible. And it almost made him pine for the days of Shank and Muller. At least then, he could mostly do his own wor work. Without being interrupted by their failings, now these very same failings on their parts were about to turn into disasters thanks to years of mismanagement. The plan had been simple. The SS would eliminate the first the heads of the numerous resistance movements that died of the Reichstag. Then, with their leadership gone, it would be a simple matter for the SS to sweep in, filling every degenerate and traitor with a thousand bullet holes. That had been Hutig's master plan, and it was all falling to crap. He would need to act quickly as he had before if he was going to salvage this mess. He turned to the men, and to the man who had brought him the last report. Tell the soldiers were advancing to phase two, he growled. The man scurried away quickly, seemingly incredibly eager to serve and pass on the Stahetler's message. If they cannot eliminate the rebellion's leaders ahead of time, they would simply push forward on eliminating all the rebels by any means necessary that Hutig deemed. The leaders will be amongst the corpses at the end of the day. A wise choice. Oh, went in stage two? It's devastation, not bad. I'll work the flesh. Okay, we need more guns, though. Oh. Nice. We're actually doing really well now. Really, really well. This is looking a little better. Ru Rwanda Arundi is not looking good at all. So that's not good. But we'll work on it. We're working on it. <clears throat> the economy, though, how's that looking? We want, do want to salt the earth as well. Find the supporters. Co-op the natives. Up tell them for Africa and Shavarilga. Empty the cities. Our growth is not very good. We already did ta temporary tax cut. So, we have too much surplus. We need to spend more money. How do we spend more money? I guess we just make more divisions. Even though we are trying to do that right now. What if we did that one? Let's auto-deploy them all. Look, that's a little better. Slightly okay. Oh, GDP did go down. And we do want to cut off the debt, but still. There we go. Keep spreading out. You'll be fine. Loot and burn all the way home. Up to for Afrika and Shafai Villaga. I'll do that one and then empty the cities. As our army and Einsatzgruppen occur more and more casualties, of course I read this earlier, it's becoming increasingly difficult to fill our ranks with full-blooded Aryans. Though we don't like it, we have little choice of both our ranks with natives. The Abteilung for Afrikanische Variabilica, or Office for the African Volunteers, will therefore be established. We all know St. African would volunteer to fight for us. It will be nonetheless tri trivial to bolster our ranks with natives with corrosion and liberally kidnapping uh, hostages. My apologies for rereading that one. I forgot about that, but whatever. Not bad. Not bad at all. I was worried about the... the uh, the economy, though. Hmm. I mean, we're literally maxed out on spending. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but, you know, whatever. Ah. Organized raids in Central Africa. Oh, Sudvest Africa. So, what does this do for us? Increase the liquid reserves by 100%. Holy crap. Hmm. Well, our bounty. Our bounty. I guess we might as well. Doesn't look like it hurt anything there. Uh, how are we doing for everywhere else? 75% is not great. 80% is okay. Yeah, that's actually that's actually really bad. Oh boy, that's really bad actually. So that means we immediately will go empty the cities, find the supporters. We'll, build up, we'll probably do this one next. Decrease GDP by 7%. Holy crap. So it seems that even tracking and neutralizing the terrorist cell down to the single member was not enough. The problem is that our SS units overlooked a very important detail. When dealing with the subhumans, they're not alone. In slums and camps, there are people who sympathize with their cause and offer their support, even if they are not formally affiliated with their revolters. We must remember in our mission that no one is innocent. Every single subhuman native is guilty merely by existing. Therefore, it is only a matter of time until he plots to revolt against his Aryan masters. There should be no room for leniency or mistakes. We will destroy them all. And destroy them all we will. Increase the ranks, yes. Ah, okay, why not? Our bounty. The glory and beauty of the rising African sun's golden rays dawned out within the heart of the Stahetler, and said all that Hans Hutig heart bore that morning was the intention of finding the fruits of his warlike labor, and the hatred he harbored for every land, very land, which cast such glorious rays down upon him, all in all within the walls and upon the gate to a military base within Quillemaine. Now, with the sound of the opening gates of Quillemaine's walls ringing out alongside the combustion of the Schutzstaffel's trucks, Stahetler Hans Hutig eagerly waited what the shedding of Air African blood would merit the Reichstag. Who took Sealy Gaze open in awe as he saw the incoming convoy and the bounty they hauled. Entire trucks had been filled with weapons stolen from the caches, and new military vehicles drove in sync with the convoy, replenishing the vehicles wasted in these dire wars throughout Africa. Who took nearly cracked a smile as he saw the enlisted personnel of the Gross Afrikaner SS labor to move the crates of guns to their supply depots, with cranes and trucks working for the glory of the Reichstag. 
Oh, yes, sir, 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 Stratler, yes, sir. Suddenly, a saluted officer next to Hutig prompted him to return the salute as he get his gaze upon the bounty had been broken. What is it? Oh, uh, Bonfira, said Hutig. Well, sir, I just wish to report to you, as a commanding officer of the raiding missions which we have just returned, that the many eagerly and bravely served upon the front lines, and that the op gross Afrikaner SS has proven to be a utter success for Uranian's glory. The officer said before issuing a salute, Hutig began to crack a wicked smile in the light of Oba Sturm Bonfira's report. How many Africans did you say you killed? Come on, let's have a talk. Grand total of 226 pieces of military equipment, or don't forget to designate these weapons for the SS. Anyway, let's talk. Einstein's group in stockpile. National stockpile. Put them in the stockpile. The onset script. The Boer Republic is uneasy. Influence of the ANC is dangerous. More equipment. Increase the ranks. Yes, please. Oh, so we knew both at the same time is not a good idea. Uh, they talk. Dar es Salaam. There you go. You can invest more money. I think you only do it like once a year, which kind of sucks, so. But growth is not bad right now. Oh, Colonel Babata von Sanzaba, Franz Hosler. I am urgently asking the Stadthelder to send resources to deal with a warlord which previously took control of Sons of Barhafen. Investigation by the SS Polar Sides concluded that the warlord originates from Uganda and has been planning this operation for months. I insist on the rebels' connections to Italian, Japanese, and American intelligence having made this possible. Now this warlord has repaired several trawlers from Sons of Barhafen and uses them to cross the channel to Tanganyika. While the rebel leader claims to have taken control of the entire coastline, I can report that the crossing only managed to take a few isolated areas of Dar es Salaam. This is a chance to escalate into a major uprising if the rebels are not crushed immediately. Therefore, I repeat my request for aid to put down the rebels. Hi, Hutig. Send them assistance. Yeah, that's not bad. Point three three four. Yeah. Uh, that's getting worse, but whatever. I mean, the deficit. Yeah, the debt is fine. We have no debt, which is amazing. I love the Burgundian system economics. Also, we did boost this up a little more too, so. It's fine. It's fine. We need more growth anyways. 0.334 goes up to what? 0.462? Alright. We're all going to have a lot of surplus for now. Good. Find the supporters. After that, where are we at with this? Catastrophe. That's not good. Yeah. Why not make one more? Why not? Unrest in Rwanda, Urundi? Uh, I'm not going to read these ones, but if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. It's fine. What type of template is this? 16, huh? That might help us with a little more growth, maybe, too. Surplus is fine. Uh, oh, organized raids. Conscript the natives? 6% chance nothing will happen. So, best Africa? Yes. And then empty the cities, maybe. To fight the growing native menace, every city must be patrolled, building it from the factory to the village. Shut should be monitored. The shot hotlers. Early efforts and surveillance and monitoring have yielded great results. We just need to apply the methods of a larger scale and extend this system outside of Quilame. And those in places not connected to the electrical grid will simply increase the air patrols. The air that's confiscated from the traders will serve nicely. The dam is finished. Nice. The blacks are triumphant. The reports are finished. No binders remain on the desk of the man that had brought Africa to ruin. Hans Hutig, for the first time in his life, felt a sense of accomplishment. Accomplishing the impossible, crushing Africa under the Aryan jackboot. There be no word from the Reich, and those degenerates in the U.S. <clears throat> have surely realized by now all hope is lost. No man, woman, or child opposed Hutig. It was done, it was finished. Indulging in a stiff drink was never Hutig's thing, but for such an occasion as such as this, an exception was made. Hutig leaned back in his chair, unbuttoned his otherwise tight jacket, and poured himself a gra glass of brandy. <clears throat> uh... A bottle of brandy so exceptional, perhaps even the Fuhrer Germany could ill afford one. Who did detest his former co-worker Müller, but he appreciated the fact that at least Müller knew his drinks. Who took down two glasses of brandy before screwing the lid back on and pulling it back on the shelf? Who took set his table, writing one final order: "Burn all." Those two words will ever be associated with Hutig, the butcher of Africa. With the focus, you changes. German soldiers now the, the drums of war even louder, and will fire will spread across the continent, city by city, village by village, if one need be, one person at a time, and Africa now and forevermore. Uh, I want to finish this one first, so the situation can improve better. Hmm. Oh my god, you got relocated, didn't you? That's stupid. We should have enough time to get down there. Wow, that's pretty bad growth. I'm not gonna lie, that's god awful. So do we get that one done? Maybe not. Oh. Call it a Paris. Let's give him the fat. Uh. Uh. Okay. Now we've done the impossible. 
The Aryan Jackboot has crushed the degenerate native resistance. Foolish would challenge us. Now we stand tall as the masters of Africa. Our campaign of terror destruction has, however, not been enough. It's never enough in the shadows. The natives still plotted our demise. There's one solution to force them out of hiding. The continent of darkness must be enlightened by fire need be. Oh. Um. Whoa. Whoa, why is it all easy? 100%. Why is it all 100%? Security going to this one, please go ahead. Wunderbar. Um. We're currently, wait, we're already at stage four? We, what, we've barely got to stage two, I thought. The Africans pray for death, their hope extinguished by the black sun. What the heck? I mean, it's only 68. We had all the rest of the focus to go through. Uh, devastation is what? 351. I'm not sure what this is supposed to do. I mean, obviously, the sub mod currently, right now, uh, uh, is still in development, I'll say that. So, I don't think this is supposed to happen yet. We have a billion in reserves. I love national socialism so much. Hoisting the black flag. Saying at attention, Private Obamaya diligently looked around him. Besides him, his friends, now colleagues. Years of rigorous training and fanatical indoctrination made him numb. He felt no sorrow, no shame, or guilt. His honor was loyalty, and until death he was bound to the cause. At the hoisting of the black SS flag began a fanfare of trumpets playing their anthem. The tune to the band, reminiscent of the ones he heard at the academy, gave him a small feeling of nostalgia. Nostalgia for better days. Days where Obamaya still had his father, brother, and mother, the two four. Former two, both died by the hands of an African guerrillas, found brutalized and mutilated, the later committing suicide after hearing the passing of her husband and son. The fanfare ended, and the quiet that followed was soon replaced by its shouting of the commander. The shouting was drowned out by his own thoughts. Perhaps if it wasn't for national socialism, his family would still be here. Perhaps if it wasn't for this war, his family would still be here. Possibly the loss of his family was poetic justice, for he had brought the demise of so many countless families. Perhaps there remained some justice in Africa, but uh, dad knew a culture comp. Guerrilla fighters have proved themselves adept at cowering behind foliage, desperate and unwavering, breaking them is not impossible, no. We must strike them where they are most vulnerable, families scattered throughout Africa, seeking refuge in the same dark spots as their fighters. There's no need to waste both bullet and men in trying to directly fight the natives. The sweltering heat and unbearable humidity bogs us down. Let us employ a new method, fire and forget. It has already proven effective, burning large clusters of forest, and then it gets spread all around, talk, taking with them the families of the natives. We will break them by any means necessary and skim the fat. During the war against the OFN and the war against the natives, it became clear that the fortune could not be trusted. Always working behind the back of who to against. And the time has finally come again to deal with the threat once and for all. When Fulcher's God will rotate out, the new God replacing the old one will instead be comprised of our soldiers, where they will finally bring an end to the traitor threat. Seriously, how do we get... Uh, uh, cut? Oh, that only went by point one. Oh my gosh. How, seriously, how, do, do we need a navy? Maybe, do we need a navy now? Like, maybe do we need, maybe, maybe we need a navy. Yeah, okay, let's go with that one. Uh... We need more spending. I don't like the, the, the economy getting shrinking. A second horseman. Bullets whizzed by. As the sound of anguish drowned out the noise of the engine, the tracked vehicles drove on and on, while its flamethrowers both front and back spewed hellfire until all had burned to a crisp. The soldiers inside the vehicle, clutching their weapons as if they was their child holding on for dear life, following the onslaught, armored cars spraying everything with bullets they didn't wear a German uniform. A soldier peered out over the parapet. And behold the absolute mayhem around him, bodies, floor, and fauna set alight, burn black charcoal. He had a vomit, the stench shrunted. He could not let this queasiness get the better of him. He swallowed the vomit in disgust, a burning feeling on the inside of his throat, but that burning did not compare to the burning around him. The jungle had been ravaged, soon there would be only remain ash. It came close to looking like the apocalypse, as when the second seal was broken, it came another. Those who sat on it would take peace from the earth. Men would say, lay another, slay another. They rode a red horse, they were granted a special, a great sword. We're already maxed out on this already. Holy crap. This is so weird. There's nothing we can do. Oh, GDP did go up. It's going to go way down now. Uh, growth is really bad. Inflation is really bad, though. Um, Our nominal base growth is 4.783. Our growth multiplier is from what? Country modifiers. Oh, from a lot of infrastructure that we built in states. Damage infrastructure from taxes, from income taxes, huh? Trade balance. Well, if we have more infrastructure, that'd be good too, I guess, right? We can't even do that now, right? Yeah, we can't even do that. What the heck? Uh, encourage uprisings. There's no really point to do that, but okay. Economy of plunder. 
Golden diamonds are plenty in Africa, and with the Dark Continent tamed once and for all, we can finally begin tasting the sweet fruits of victory by confiscating the golden jewelry that Africans have been mining for decades. We can begin improving this continent. Of course, such actions will result in the deaths of said workers who extracted the resource in the first place, but it doesn't matter. We have no need for them. Decrease state GDP by a whole bunch. Growth will go down by quite a bit. Increase GDP, though. The last laugh. Fulshino was dragged out of his office by a squad of SS men kicking and screaming, demanding answers from the men who refused to speak. Fulshino was hurried to the execution square, routinely used for putting dissenters to death. Now Fulshino was bound to the same pole he condemned so many to. The squad officer took out a piece of paper on it. The charge of treason. Who took it seemed fit to get rid of Fulshino, whether due to uh, Fulshino doing his job too poorly or too well. It was too late to ask questions, as the officer began reading out aloud what was written on a piece of paper. Charge with treason. Fulshino began lashing out against the soldiers in Hutik, saying how he should have killed them all years ago. How they had nothing but dogs and treaders, Fulshino eventually calmed down, allowing the officer to continue reading, finding him guilty on the charge of the punishment, death penalty. The soldiers readied their rifles, aimed and waited for the command to fire. Fire! In one last act of defiance, Fulshino yelled, Heil! Fulshino's last words ended prematurely. Traitors don't deserve the, the final laugh. Toil the land. Huge swaths of land have been left abandoned by the natives in a desperate attempt to escape our grasp. While a lot of flora have been burned down, a lot of fertile soil still remains. This land is ripe for the taking, and we must begin immediately by getting our most basic needs filled, grain. While implementing a spontaneous agrarianism, we may see steady growth of food production in the next few years, if not months. More growth, yes. And a growth factor. Ebhoff program. More growth. A growth factor. Death ceiling. Oh, wait, do we have... That is a very erect line. Good job, UK. No one cares. Um, I'm not sure what to do. I, I don't know how to spend more money. This is weird. How do we make so much money? We don't know how to spend more money. How? Governments love spending so much money. There's nothing we can do. This is so weird. This doesn't make any sense. But a call to Paris. <gasps> Hutig has looked up to Herr Himmler ever since the fiends in the Reich abandoned him and his SS colleagues in Africa to fend for themselves. We have shown them our strength and have tamed the African beast. Such an impossible and doomed objective was accomplished by the very best, and who take knows of one man who desires the very beast? All we need is a signal. Inflation is going way down, which is nice, but toil the land, my friends. Is this really it? Like, this is... I don't know if it's glitch, it's just not ready, finished yet, but, you know, that's fine, you know. I support whatever mod that... Oh, now we have a deficit! Wait, what? Wait, what? How do we have a deficit now? I press in Nanjing. Expenditures. Military spending is quite high. Oh, do we make some more divisions? Maybe no? That's still the same six-ish, I thought. Uh, I guess we'll wait till the next month to see what happens, I guess. For the common turn? I'll call it a Perry. Oh, it's because of this scene. Oh, miscellaneous cost is in billions, that's why. An anxious evening. Hutix had never seen his cheer. He knew the day would come, the day when he'd call the head of the honcho himself. The spineless rats in Germany had corrupted the vision of National Socialism, when they had destroyed both it and the Reich from the inside. There was no question about it. It was rife with jewelry! From the lowest peasant to the upper echelons, every single corner was rife with degeneracy and filth. When the Reich cut off support for Hutik, he knew, he knew all along, the Jew had struck the very heart of the Reich. Few were his equals, even fewer were his superiors, but he looked up to him, the savior of the Aryan race who had washed National Socialism clean of its skin and sin. Sutik had built his new state around the same principles as his hero. Incredibly harsh and unforgiving, he was a spinning image of Himmler. The phone lines to Germany were all dead, and the Reichstag was cut off from everyone and everything. He had a singular red phone remained. It could only receive calls, not make them. Sutik had been sitting here for hours, just waiting on that phone call. Perhaps the savior of the Aryan race had forgotten about him. Had he done something wrong, or had he not done enough? These thoughts raced through the mind of Hutig. He was in disbelief. The anxiety was unbearable. The anger in the air was palpable. It felt like his heart was sinking. Nervous tapping drowned out the sounds of gunfire and roaring engines in the background. Hutik felt a sharp pain in his heart. Perhaps the butch of Africa would meet his end right here. But the phone rang. It rang three times before Hutik picked up the phone. On the other side, a raspy voice started speaking. Herr Hutig? Thank you for playing my mod. The mod ends here, but expect more content in the future. No! How are we already at the end? I was going to make this an hour and a half video. And make the next one an hour and a half video. Because we had all those other focuses we had. Ah! Oh, so much cost. So much cost. Uh, What would happen if we went down here? Wait. So we go all the way up to here. We have negative 4.6 billion. Negative 4.6%, I mean. Negative 4.6. Negative 4.4, so that's better. And we still get a surplus that way. That makes no sense. If we do this, nothing happens. Actually, you go all the way down here. Literally nothing happens. The economy is only shrinking. No worries, we still have plenty of liquid reserves to deal with this, so... Uh, let's give one more one. Let's see what happens. And happy 1969, everybody. Uh, we made it. And we made sure that the gross Afrikaner Reichstag has no debt. 
no debt whatsoever. Or the economy is dying, but that's okay. But I guess, unfortunately, that's going to be the end of us. Ah, oh, that's big sadness hours. Big sadness hours. I wish we could stay here, but... I wish we could do more of the focus tree, too. Like, I was getting a little worried about things, but overall, it's a lot of fun. I love playing as uh, Ost Africa. Ost Africa is so much fun. It just, there's so much you can do. So much, so much fun you can do. We didn't even finish, we didn't do that much of the Boer Republic either, but hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts on were for this campaign, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.